Hi friends, welcome to Sailing Liberty and to Crumpy's Hair Salon. You might not be happy, but you definitely get the haircut. We're really glad you're back uh, because today <laughs> it's going to get real. It's going to get down and dirty and we're going to get things done. Dockside, the way it really is, and it's going to be a nutty dirty day. Out on the hook, cruising the shorelines, <laughs> say goodbye to your favorite hair cutter. Say hello to saving a few bucks. What do you think, Ellen? Do you ever get the feeling that your hairdresser is kind of into you? <laughs> I'm getting that feeling myself. <laughs> Today on Sailing Liberty. As I was going over the cork and carry mountains, I met with Captain Farrell and his money. He was counting. I first produced my pistol. And then produce my rapier Stand and deliver For you are a bold deceiver I said ooh rama do rama da Wait for the daddy-o Wait for the daddy-o There's whiskey in the jar Just sitting the boat a bit better The marina's washing machines were destroyed by the storm surge, salty water. We are going back to the old school. Plunger and the bucket. I've never done it actually. <laughs> how you came up with that idea uh <laughs> it had a handle on it already yeah yeah it sounds like it's working it's doing something having clean clothes yeah don't mind if i do i'm gonna let them soak and get on to the next thing <sighs> Now I'm cutting you the Viggo Mortensen hairstyle. I love Lord of the Rings and I call it Hero Hairstyle. Hero's hairstyle. I love those sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> you trust me? Not <laughs> How much are you charging for this? <laughs> Nothing. All right, you can't beat the price. So what are you going to say? <laughs> Dad's haircut is ready. Many of my hairs have been cut, and that's a fact. Thank you, sweetie. I'm cleaning this mess up from the hurricane, and then I'm gonna rinse everything with the fresh water because the water that came in was all brackish. First thing, I just gonna... Back to the sea. Back to the sea, yeah. I took my rings off. Uh, some of you have recommended not to wear any jewelry when I'm working and uh, I read your comments and remember them and take your advice. Yeah, this is the bower that came with the boat. It's a claw anchor, also known as a bruce. 20 kilos. Oh yeah, that is, it's like 44 pounds or something. But as a stern anchor, whew, it's a big boy. Not that long, the chain actually. It's cool. Ship shape shape that is. I'm gonna get this taken apart for you, sweetie, and then you can take it over in the dock and clean it up, get ready for paint while I go over and finish up that seafood trailer. Make us some chain plate money. Ted is getting the chain across the boat and to the dock. Arr, 
Butterfly R. You're welcome, lady. All right, we are going a little wire brushing in here. We are not going for the perfection, just better than it was. Just getting the salt water off. And the dust. We have a new crew member in the marina and she's the tiniest kitten cat. Are you the cutest? Oh, oh, so cute. Well, one thing leads to another. We started cleaning up our stern anchor from the hurricane and we figured before we put the chain back in the locker, let's give it a quick coat of cold galvanizing compound. Yeah, this is what we use as our undercoat on our chain and this will hopefully prevent rust in the future and get a lot more life out of this 50 feet of 3 8 chain. Let's spray it and see what happens. You gotta love the look of that. It's like brand new chain. We still haven't used our mizzen and we have isomet spars and it took me a long while to figure out why it looks so weird. I don't know if I need that. I think it's. Whoop, yep. Well yeah. Okay. Do they have don't a move, nest don't move, there? Don't move. He's just confused yeah. right now. Uh, I think I got stung by a wablane. <gasps> yeah, I, my fingers are hurting. I thought okay. it's fiberglass. Oh, I put my hands in the nest. Go thing. take an al algae pill. Okay. We relocated the box, they had 24 hours to go and now we continue on with our project. And this is why we need to fix our gooseneck. With very close inspection, it doesn't seem like the mass bracket is broken. We're gonna go now online and order a new ball with the new rings and see if we can fix our gooseneck. That's some really good news. How often you discovered that something in your boat is not broken? <laughs> hey, how's it going? It's going well, and you? Great, thank you. It's my first time calling. Um, I am trying to fix a mizzen mast on a catch, and it has old isomat uh, spars on it, um, and it's the type with a ball. And the forks and the metal stuff are all fine, um, but it does come apart on me if I fiddle with it. Because um, the, uh, the, there's no snap rings left and the ball is a bit worn. Just another great experience uh, calling Rig Right. It's always so pleasant uh, to get them on the phone. They're, they know everything and, uh, and you know nothing. You don't even know how to measure. <laughs> hey. We're all trying to learn and some of us will never learn. Before the storm I took off the mizzen boom because the gooseneck is broken or some parts missing. And just put the topping lift on and I'm gonna raise the boom up. We um, got the new gooseneck from the rig ride and we're gonna test out if it works. This is the old uh, Gooseneck uh, ball, and we got in the rig right this. This cost 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Seems like a ripoff. Turns out these rings are really stiff, so I'm hoping I can get it because Helen's little kittens are too cute to try to pull this thing around the ball.
don't want to fail at this. Just it moves around while you try to get the ring on. Ooh, wow, well, okay. That, boy, that was almost caught my thumbnail. That was going to be scary painful. Okay, is, is that working? It's kind of on there, but I think it's a little rotated. Yeah, it's rotated. Mm. What do you think of that design, Dad? You know what? Let's just see what it's like when it's working, and then we'll decide. Because right now... We decided that we don't like it. When you look at how simple goosenecks are, even on our other mast, which might be a retrofit, honestly, um, you don't understand why you would ever need this, especially on some mizzen mast that no one cares about. So, Going for number two. Now she wants to rotate on me. Oh, I can do that. Two can play at that game. Oh, because that's if we're going down one, right? <laughs> why is this one harder? Oh, because it's sprung apart. Ooh. Oh, that's why they sell a set of spares of these for $50. No, can... 25 Oh, is that all? Yeah. If we get this on here and it doesn't want to come off, we're leaving it on. <laughs> Which is kind of, I guess, the whole point of it. Oh, Ooh. see, it's, te it's technique and, and, and a bruised thumbnail, but... Wow, look at that sky. It's that kind of stuff that really perks you up here in paradise. So it's on. I think it's on there. Should Let's we try? try? Wow, it feels good. Really? Yeah. Can I try? That's a pretty good position. Mm -hmm. I think it's in. No, it's not. It's not in. Oh. Oh, it's going in between of this. Like it's not even. We still haven't even used our mizzen mast. This problem has kept us from even putting the sail up with some wind going, so. We gotta get this thing fixed. I can't. Oh, 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 did that just go something? I heard a shift. It's like, it's like separating for some reason. The ball. Oh, that sounded good. That sounded like a good old click. This is before and after. The left one is obviously before, and I guess uh, we got it. It's fixed. Congratulations. <laughs> we did it again. <laughs> Let's get down there and uh, straighten out those post-it notes. It's the countdown to the voyage. Welcome aboard. It took us long time figuring it out, but the process itself was like, and done. Done list. It seems like less than a week since we sent the battery in. Pretty crazy. I think they must see the tracking, take active shipment, and then boom, it's on its way, and they just ship the next one out. And they sent us a brand new one. We love this military grade stuff. VMAX, but I'll tell you what, it's really heavy. Okay, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Can you carry 110 pounds if you're struggling in 90 pounds? I could carry 110 pounds. I can wait for the tide to come in a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. Total storable power. This is represents over 300 amp hours. 
Not identical to 300 amp hours of lithium, but it's still a lot. Now I'm gonna go all the way over to the side. I'm gonna get the starter battery back in next to it. All right, this is our 12 volt cabinet featuring VMAX tanks. Yeah, the solar batteries. Heavy duty military grade. Super heavy, 90 pounds each, 155 amps. This is our switchboard for controlling our 24 to 12 volt charging. We take our 24 volt lithium, we run it through a Victron Orion. We can route the juice through these switches to each and every battery on the boat and control its charge profile and uh, bring it up to speed anytime we want. Frankly, Helen and I decided to go for the best and have everything top shelf. So we didn't skimp on anything. You think it's uh, safe for the heavy seas? Yeah. Wires are extra thick, connectors are on there with hydraulic crimps, batteries, electronics, everything is top shelf. Because when you're out at sea, you want the creature comforts and plenty of them <laughs> as long as possible until the day comes that we're back the old seafaring days where you're just rubbing two sticks together which we'll practice in the meantime and hopefully we'll get good at it oh wow well, you don't remember how you put it today well, it's how been you done it before out. maybe i have to do this you will figure it out eventually there we go got a door hinge it in there Where it goes to hot. Keep them separated and uh, get them equalized in voltage. Hey, if somebody wants to get us another Petzl uh, headlamp, then they are in our Amazon wish list. Now I'm taking the opportunity to check if this battery which we got is in the proper voltage range before we do anything with it. Yeah, between 12.5 and 12.4. That sounds fine. Mm-hmm. Want to check the starter battery since we have it disconnected? It's been charging. 9.2. Yeah, it's 9.2. Wow, okay, I was concerned about that battery. It was acting up before. Okay, so it's no point to even connect it at the moment, or it's shot, right? Yeah. So we should... Um, think about getting another starter battery? Yeah, and take it out. And this starter battery we have up here, What's that's that? from the Hokahe. That oh. battery is like How do, oh. five, six, seven, eight years old. 12.8. That's good. Oh, it's actually a pretty good battery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, West Marine. Wow, okay, so this is uh, shot. And we need another starter battery, basically. They this little shocked that this battery is already shot. But I guess it is the way it goes. <laughs> it's just a starter battery, you know, but it's like automotive, so whatever. We'll get another one. We'll get hopefully something better. We'll figure out the better way to do it. And we'll do it the better way, the boat way, the marine way, the big money way. Well. Whatever, we'll see how much money we have. We got our replacement battery and it's in. Done. To do, doing, and done. So what's next? Next gonna be the chain blades. Uh oh. It's a scary project, to be honest. And it's gonna go to doing list. God willing, our last massive project is the chain blades. Now we are in process to figuring out the design and how to do and which materials to use. These are our chain blades and they are 43 year old stainless steel, no grade at all from Taiwan. And since you remember our um, steering broke during our first shakedown cruise, it had a crevice corrosion in steering chain. So we think these are no good either and we don't want to lose our mast in the middle of the ocean in a rough weather therefore we have to come up with 
a good design and Ted has some out of the box ideas and some other ideas. Yeah, the chain plates are pretty scary. I agree with Helen there. And there's no reason to think we're the exception to the rule and that somehow we have lifelong stainless that no matter what, it's always going to be good because this boat's proving us wrong on that point time and again. Now, these are traditional except for they're, they're encapsulated on the inside of the hull with fiberglass. And then to top it off, they are totally um, behind the fanciest cabinets and woodwork and all that that we love about this boat. So the last thing we wanna do is start tearing our cabinets out and then grinding fiberglass. So instead of trying to replicate what was here already, which we don't even like anyway, we're gonna to do something totally new and we'd love to hear what you guys think about it. We're gonna create an entire plate the whole way down this gunnel to cover all three of these points for our shrouds. And we're gonna make it about a quarter inch thick, maybe three eighths, four inches wide, and on the inside, we're going to have a backing plate just as beefy and just as strong. And then about the same point right here, we're going to put a short little chain plate that's going to cover the distance between our master plate and our pick point. And we think it's going to be really great. It's going to give us great structure and it's going to save us a lot of pain and suffering. Plus, it's going to look cool. Tell us which materials you considered and why. We got two options in materials. We love to use silicon bronze because it's shippy, it's proven the test of time, and it has no corrosion issues like stainless does. But the cost is really nuts. We're into like three to 4,000 just for the plates, not counting hardware. So we're gonna look at stainless as an option too, but we don't wanna have to drill a big zigzag pattern of stainless steel bolts the whole way down. That's a lot of holes. So uh, we'd have to have that done in a machine shop. So pricing it out gets a little nutty and a little complicated. Uh, it's not apples and oranges because silicon bronze is quite nice to work with and to drill, but stainless is horrible, especially for big bolts and lots and lots of bolt holes on two plates per side. And then that's four and then that's eight. It's a, we have a catch. So we're looking at eight different plates with this same treatment. So it's a lot of work, a lot of materials, and we got to figure out how to do it right. So we're looking for materials and we're also looking for machine shop options. Let us know in the comments any good sources or machine shops that you guys know about. The last thing I want to do is drill 80 holes in 316 stainless half inch diameter. There aren't enough drill bits in the world to make me want to do that and sure aren't enough drill bits in my box to get it done. We're going to think about sharpening drill bits. It seems like a good old fashioned idea that time has come when you're buying drill bits for $30 each. <laughs> you hate to throw them out so quick. Wow, you know, I never did a custom trailer for anyone except myself before. But I gotta tell you, this one's beautiful. It's a vintage seafood trailer, and now it's in all its glory with a couple of little extra upgrades. Modernized insulation and a snazzy paint job. You gotta love a thing of beauty. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Thank you, thank you. One step closer to those new chain plates. All right, and she's ready for delivery. The refrigeration unit right here. You gotta run it off of the truck, the tow vehicle. Got a brand new electrical system for our marker lights, tail lights, and backup lights. And we got safety chains all mounted up with some hardened bolts, ready to go. Brand new jack. We've got a boat seat adapter. Got a little platform for the vendor guy to sit at. We got snazzy marker lights, all the proper reflectors, taillights, and voila. Self-opening lid. Can't beat that. Everything's NSF, easy to clean. Keep that food fresh and cold. Beautiful graphics, courtesy of our photography. Soundproof compartment for our refrigeration unit and a big signboard set up. Because who doesn't want to know what's available? Come and get it. Delicious and ready to eat. Philip, make a lot of money with this trailer and make a lot of people happy. Enjoy. Hey, it easy. We've got our final connections made. I'm ready to fire this baby up and see it get cold. Is it working?
Mm, mm, mm. Nothing better than a salty oyster brought right to your doorstep. That's what these guys are going to do with this little sucker. They're going to take this to parties and festivals and tailgating sessions and give the guys a taste of the sea. Kind of fun to be part of it. Well, that was down and dirty, but she's coming along nice and pretty. Hey, Swab, grab me another brewski. <laughs> You know, every day is a hard day down at Dockside, especially when you're on the countdown to the voyage. <laughs> we sure are. Mmm, <laughs> tastes like winter in Caribbean. Oh, that is a sweet <laughs> taste. <laughs> if anything's gonna happen, it's gonna happen in the Caribbean. See you next time. On Sailing Liberty. Thanks for watching. If you like, comment and please subscribe. We're a new channel. Every subscription counts. Thank you so much. Then we look forward to seeing you on the next show. Sailing Liberty. Char Charge you scallywags. Hi, Captain. Like any great adventure, it begins with a girl and a sword. Before you know it, the tail twists into a t-shirt. Hey, click in the link below in the description box and get one of our shirts. Bye now, and join the adventure.